Hi, it's Pete, Mind Wise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors, and this is one of the first weekends in August 2020, and it's going to be apparently record temperatures in especially the southern mid part of the UK. I'm in a woodlands in part of the UK, southbound, and I'm out with a good friend of mine who I'll uh, refer to in a little while. But this is a woodland that we'd planned to meet up, a few of us from the old day YouTube channel days, from the early days of when we first started out. And there's only two of us that could make it this weekend. So these are the woods that we're in. You just saw me giving a bit of a recce of the shelter. So here's my tarp, three by three. So I tried to break some of the outline with some foliage. So of course there is a rectangular shape of the tarp if you're actually looking for a tarp, but at least the colouring does blend in to the environment that's around it. And there you can see we just had some offcuts of some dying off stuff and stuff that's already broken, just breaking out some of the outline and blending in just a little bit more. So the theme this weekend is a little bit of a stealth camp, stealth wild camp. So we're just using a few techniques that um, we both haven't done for a little while. Whereby on my associate for the weekend, he's got his woodland camo army issue tarp. And there you can see we've got a bit of camo netting which just sort of breaks up some of the outline of the activity that's going on within our little basher setup. I'm now the other side of where that camo netting is and just panning round so now you can see the outside and we just use a bit of bracken to break up the horizontal edge across the top although I tend to sort of droop it so whatever I fix it to I sort of droop it so it follows the contours of shapes that are around it but of course you can see there the bracken. I've just walked away from it again, a slightly different angle and well beyond, as far as you can see and beyond, there is public access. It's a real rustic pathway. But sort of coming through here, unless your dog goes runabout and goes, hey, well, you're not going to really be coming up here. And there we are, and that's our setup within the majority of the foliage, which was the most discreet area to be. I'm just walking past where our setup is, and I'll just take you to a distance, the other side, where we tend to blend in to where our pitch is compared to where we could be sort of outside here but we're more exposed. You can see it's all quite open and it gets a little bit more dense over there and that's where we're bashed up for the weekend. So it's a bit of a stealth wild camp for 24 hours and uh, the friend I'm out with is Darren Funky Prepper. We met up many years ago when we first started in YouTube. I started my channel. He started getting involved with the outdoors. He made contact uh, via my channel. We sort of exchanged ideas and what have you. He started going out wild camping and the rest is history. And also with Armoured Cockroach, Mike, who was supposed to come this weekend. And speak of the devil, here comes a man now. <laughs> the Walking Bushman. How he can wear all that clobber, I do not know. And there's me just with shorts, boots no, no, just and skin. That's what I was saying to Pete, so imagine those lads out in Helmand in the Warriors. Yeah. How they done that, man, that's real. Just be melting, wouldn't they? There you go. So we've got some more stuff. So me say, as I said earlier, me and Darren were talking about sort of breaking up the eye line, especially with the tarp, the squareness. Although from that long distance picture, you couldn't actually see it because the color scheme. And so we're right in the middle there. And like we, we weren't really going to sort of be real super stealth, but we just thought, we both had the idea that we just wanted a bit of chill time, touch base as we hadn't done it for a long time, just a few of us. Uh, but sadly, Mike couldn't make it this weekend. He's got other commitments that just cropped up totally out of the blue. So me and Darren carried on with the mission and just thought we just want a social little meet up and uh, just practice a few skills, just a few things that we haven't done for a while, like stealthing up your basher setup, all that sort of thing. More. Sorry, mate, what were you going to say? I'll tell you what's noticeable from a distance is... This dark line from the, that to the floor, right. you can see that, yeah. 50 yards away, everything yeah. else is not too bad, but you've just got a big black So line. yeah, if you weren't looking for it, and you weren't used to seeing lines, like you might think it was a bit of fallen log or something, or tree trunk, but as you say, the likes of us will be thinking that one step ahead, and just thinking, well, if you're going to do it, if we're going to sort of practice these skills, and say, I haven't done a bit of a stealth camp for quite a while, for at least maybe 18 months, and when I've been out in the canoe, and the same with some of Darren's projects, he might have just been doing reviews on stuff. And it's the first time that we've been out to get out, and this was the whole objective. 
just want to have a bit of a chin wag meet up we haven't done something like this for a long time and then we thought yeah let's have a little bit of a play so even though we're just here for 24 hours it's good just to sort of like work out a few skills and just give you guys some content for some of the videos we do anyway me and Dara were just chatting about just taking it one step further actually about knowing your eye lines what I call it out of sight out of mind um, we were just talking about a few bits and pieces as to other things that contribute to being stealthy just out of sight out of mind so if you had to bug out or something happened whereby you need to be clandestine here we're going towards a slight part of public access although it's not like a country park or anything but as you go down lower people's heads are lower so that's what we'd yeah. probably see yeah. but so this is why it's important for us to put in some effort to conceal our location um, we want to make sure that anyone down there can't really see what we do is we go down there and we look up at our shelter and see what we can and can't see if we sort of pan around to what would be head height that's really the level you would see but we're further up right up over there so you'd have to sort of traverse this area to actually see us and then you'd have to be sort of aware of the sort of shapes and sights and sounds of a basher setup to actually really notice us and if you follow my travels before when I've been in the woods many times I've filmed people walking past me and they didn't even see me even though the dog was growling in the background but back to Darren yes <laughs> <laughs> straight like a PIG so what we've um, inadvertently done is we did plan to camp down there in that area but because it's already been compromised we can't use that location so we can see them and they can't see us we're yep. lucky that we're using this time frame window to conceal our position yep. so upon their return we will all be hidden away and they won't know we're there thumbs up to that and we won't talk about the death traps which is just I think just over there which is a loop we've got buried in the ground yeah. and when someone actually sort of just walks walks over no, it, it they actually no, trigger no, loop no, no, and no, it no, hooks no, sorry, up and then dangles them oh sorry, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're no, going to include no. that okay I'll, I saw an official secret set I can't divulge that please. okay then I'll um I'll edit this bit out where's the where's the other booby traps is that that sinkhole don't down there move. don't move oh blimey right there. There's the orange. Well, I'm having a cup of tea. You stay there. Now, things you find left over in the woods, many times I've found bits of plywood I've used for a fire windshield, but I mean, you could easily improvise anything you might need to yeah, with these bits of tubing. There's another bit over there. What? Yeah. Where's one number two? <laughs> Load me up, mate. I'm going hot. Load me up. <laughs> Clear! <up. laughs> so if you were for whatever reason having to be out indefinitely there's always things to look around for it's always about improvising any bits and pieces you find around you we were just saying that um, you know we might not have considered maybe being as structural and logistic about being stealthy as much if it wasn't for the fact of knowing near to us there have been people that have camped out here before indefinitely maybe homeless we don't know but it seems to be like a temporary base for people to stay outdoors in these woods for a long time or reasonably long term and then of course where we were going to pitch there's already a setup there and it looks semi-permanent so because of that we sort of thought about being a bit more stealthy a bit look, not covert we're not in a military operation or anything but uh, just having some fun and thinking about well you know if we were here for a longer time and we didn't want to uh, be assessed by anybody then of course these actions that we're doing are really appropriate for the situation that we're in where there is potential for other people to be around. So before anyone maybe thinks of making any <laughs> wise comments about two, two white bulb beds walking around, and uh, obviously I'm stripped to the waist because I am just so hot. How Darren is walking around with his jacket, shirt, trousers on, I do not know, I'm just melting. That's why I brought five liters of water. Uh, I froze the milk. Uh, obviously in the freezer before I took it out this morning and left it overnight so it will stay unperishable it's defrosted now but it's very very cold in my rucksack so I'll leave it there insulated and when I'm using it through the day maybe making a brew and also tomorrow it won't have spoiled by then because it would have kept a reasonably sort of fridge temperature cool always got kitchen roll which is always handy for wiping stuff over but back to um, hydration I froze two of these these were ice solid They've now, I've had one and it was all like uh, slushy, crunchy ice and cool and it really, really hit the spot. And this one now is just very, very cold, so I'll probably down that in a moment. So that was quite handy. It kept other things cool as well. 
So I've just stuck the straw in and uh, taken a few sips of that and that's just like really, really nice and cold out the fridge. So that, that defrosted within, ooh, went icy cold in, I don't know, four or five hours. Uh, it's still done the job and even maybe later on, another sort of three or four hours time, if I'd have started to consume this, it would have still been sort of reasonably fridgy cold. So that's really good, especially with the temperatures today and the dehydration factors because of perspiration and what have you. That's also got um, natural fruit sugars in it as well. So the isotonic effect will be reasonable with the sugars going into your bloodstream. So that just gives you a little bit of energy from uh, being depletion. But I have actually got an isotonic mixture powder, which if I'm feeling a bit low, then I might take that for convenience before actually making something to eat. But say this is going down a treat. So bon appetit, drink wise. Yummy coldness. The wet wipes that are just on my food bag that I've got all the food that I'll be consuming over the weekend. Uh, when I wipe myself over just to freshen up a little bit, <laughs> not just borrowing it again. Brought one of these bags in, you've seen me use these before. These are postage bag, so they're really strong. I use these quite a lot, I save them if I've had stuff delivered through the post. Really handy. And to put my rubbish in for the rest of the weekend. Just show you this knife, really basic. It's a 440 stainless steel Bowie knife. Pretty heavy duty. It's quite heavy, there's no sort of ergonomic, it's real just a traditional style. I've not um, had a Bowie knife for many, many years and I just wanted one, I wanted one for ages. And this is just, a, was a special deal at uh, preppershop.com UK, Lincoln Miles' shop, who's an associate of mine that I've known since the first prepper days when uh, National Geographic did some documentaries that I was involved with and then also a thing for the BBC. I met him a third time and we're involved with a project both together. And so we've been in contact since and he said, oh, I've got these in stock now. It is actually a replica of the, uh, you think that's a knife? That's a knife, Crocodile Dundee. But I didn't get it because of that. I just got it because it was, uh, they normally retail about 35 to 40 quid. He was doing a special deal. It came in at under 30 pound with postage and packing. Just a nice heavy duty knife. It's the only one I've brought. I've not got any artisan bushcraft knife with me this weekend because I wasn't planning to do anything specific that might need that. Although I've got a multi-tool small blade, so I'll always have that as backup anyway. But this has been handy, just getting rid of a few bits of overhang where we set up the shelter. So I thought I'd just include that, but Lincoln's shop, internet shop, has done some really good deals on different bits of kit. And here's a little response pouch. I've got a few of these. I got this one, crumbs, about maybe 10 years ago. And it's a copy of another well-known, more expensive one. But here I've used this for my utility little pouch, whereby I've got my uh, mill bank bag. If we're going to be near the stream, I need to filter some water, the camping gas to go on top of the gas container. That's all I've got to cook this weekend. Got other sort of bits and pieces, technical stuff, head torch. You've seen that before. EDC attachment to the belt. I've uh, got my charge kit for the phone. I heard my phone bleep, so if I want to upload some stuff to social media, a few pictures of this weekend's event, I need to power up my phone with that because I think it's going low. There's also uh, my uh, camera extension rods to put the camera on and also the phone if I need to. The G clamp, again, you've seen this before, but you've not seen it in this pouch. I was going to bring a fire lighting kit with me and put it in the end there. But I thought we've got a lighter, we're probably not going to have a campfire. Uh, the odds of needing it as backup as a survival thing, unexpected happening, is going to be probably 99.9% .9 odds against that happening. So I didn't bring it, just made it a bit lighter. A few other things that I did shed um, <laughs> without bringing the kitchen sink. I was going into canoe mode because I can bring so much stuff. But then in here as well there's a trip wire, an alarm, so if we did need to set it up with considerations like we'd mentioned earlier on because we know other people are around or pitched up whether temporary or they could be returned. So that little uh, carry pouch was also in my rucksack. I was determined this weekend to bring my Bergen, which was uh, very gratefully, uh, very grateful for to my nephew, who is in a certain military regiment. And uh, he gave me his full Massive Great Bergen with the two rocket pouches that zip on the side. But I was determined to try and get everything in just the central part of the Bergen without using the pouches. And I 
discarded some other bits of kit that I was going to bring, so I only brought my softy trousers and softy jacket. I was going to bring the sleeping bag as well, but I thought where I'm going to be is going to be different from being slightly exposed as I was the other weekend when I was out for four days in the canoe, and the coolness of the air did pick up during the night. So of course it was handy to have the softy jacket and trousers and then also the uh, two-season tropical army sleeping bag. But then I thought the weather is so odds on that it's not going to rain and it's going to be hot. Even if it does rain, you'll be thankful to want to stand outside in it and get cold and wet. I thought I don't really need to bring my fleece jacket. I've got a lightweight um, a mossy oak shirt. And I don't need to bring my fleece. I don't need to bring another couple of bits of clothing and also the sleeping bag. So I must have discarded at least sort of nearly two kilos from that. So that was good. But I was determined to just bring everything in that Bergen, no pouches attached, but I did carry in my folding stool, a bit of creature comfort, also the large canteen and then my drinks bottle there, but that was carried in by hand. Oh, I think that's Russell. Is that Russell outside? <laughs> <laughs> hey Russ! <laughs> So this is a life, me and Darren have got our hammocks up. I brought it with me because I wasn't sure whether or not, you know, there would be an upright. I caught me a little folding stool and I thought, well, I'll bring it anyway. And Darren wasn't going to. I said, look, mate, I've got mine. And uh, he's put his up and it's like, oh, yeah, this is the best bit of it. Forget all the stealth stuff and all the techniques. <laughs> <laughs> just this. We'll just video this for about 25 minutes and you can just all chill out at the same time. But I'm on my uh, Eddie Mac. So you saw this the last video I did when I did the four day wild camp I just got a, a name drop for Eddie again just saying my gratitude for giving me this after I got over my first hip replacement operation and I've been using this ever since in my garden also when I'm wild camping but also coincidentally the one that Darren's using also Addy, Eddie, oh, we'll Eddie made it. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so Darren's just give me a bit of a push, there give me a go. bit of momentum, I'm not paying him any money. <laughs> Swingers of the world unite, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so while we're on the old hammocks, you can see the footprint. Darren's filming himself for his channel. Yeah, it's nice and relaxing. Just to chill out and just be in the moment mindful. So I like to practice what I preach. And Darren's the same as well. We both get people that maybe can't get out, but they watch our videos and our activities and things that they might have done. They can't do any more, but you know, enjoy the experience of just watching the wild camps, the outdoors activities. A bit of information with the prep, survival, that sort of thing. But then people also that get the incentive to want to do the same thing. So it's all about getting outdoors, connecting with nature. It's such a good for well-being, one's health, and especially in this day and age, especially since the beginning of this year, 2020, when there's been global restrictions, people's well-being has been stumped by having the restrictions of not being able, go, and being able to go out. So I think sometimes people appreciate when they can't, they appreciate it even more. So... Yeah, well said, mate. Absolutely. It's very much, isn't it? It's people sort of evaluate. It's when you don't have the thing you're normally used to. Help others. Yeah. On that note, I think I'll just chill for a bit longer before I have to make something to eat. <laughs> Scoff to the max. Is that one of your 25,000 calorie intake snacks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to the replace all that. for the bacon grill, that's our peak, mate. <laughs> 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 On that note. Okay, food bag. Let's see what we got in there. Okay, I've got some bread thins, came out of the freezer. Some eggs. These came out of the fridge. Chocolate bits, some little meat sticks. Now here's my ribeye steak, and these are the vegetables that I prepped. It's a uh, red pepper, green pepper, yellow pepper, carrot, onion, and it's my own little sort of Chinesey type garlic. Bit of soy sauce, bit of tomato sauce, salt, pepper. As you can see, vacuum packed, so that sort of marinated the veg a bit more and I've got some MREs in here. Flameless rash and the heaters add water, put the old sachet of food in. 
and it heats that up. Uh, tea, brew kit, three in one sugar, tea bag, mess tin, stainless steel, the sundry is in there. Wind guard in the base of the bag and also an isotonic drink which I would have had today. Camping gas on the go. This is tonight's evening meal with pre-cooked noodles. Got the vegetables in there. Then obviously that's going to reduce down a bit as it cooks. It sort of tends to shrink. And... Boy, mate. Here you go. Oh, thank you very much. Mm. Put some light on the subject. Oh, then what what doing, doing. Yeah, blinking. I'm going I blind for a minute. I can't believe you put the marmalade in by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that looks nice, mate. That's me ribeye steak, and then the noodles will go in there, so it speaks for itself, really. About about 20, 25 minutes, but I shredded, sliced up into finger lengths the uh, steak just to cook it through a little bit quicker and more effectively and then I can just fork it up and just eat finger sticks of steak and the veg. I'm not sure if I'm going to add the noodles to it. I probably will. A bit of carbohydrate. So I decide to put the noodles in. If I don't eat it all, I'll just feed the rest of it to Daz. <laughs> He's licking it. Thank you, <laughs> Salivating round his gob. So I'm going to get that down my throat and probably make a little bit of a brew later on. But it's just eating outdoors, cooking outdoors. And there can't be a better place with good company. Chilling out, wild in it, covert and stealth. Okay, so it's a sunny, warm, humid, hot Sunday morning. That's my new mat. It's a little bit more of a comfy zone. It rolls up and goes into this bag. I'll do a bit more of a feature on it probably when I'm doing a canoe camp or something, but it goes into that bag, weighs just over half a kilo. It rolls up, it's quite thin, it's pretty more comfy zone than when I normally use the two 1.2 meter army issue brown self-inflating mats. So I wanted to christen it this weekend. I say I'll give you more details about that in a future video. I wore my shorts, my boots, that self-wicking uh, military issue t-shirt, nice and lightweight, quite breathable, and I had my softy jacket over the top and just my trousers, no sleeping bag, and that was warm enough. I didn't even have to have my buff on my head. So it's comfortable and warm. Me and Darren were chatting, having a right old chin wag, putting the worlds to rights. Uh, as you normally do when you're out in nature, while camping, connecting with people. And it was just nice to us to tally up and say Roach was supposed to be with us this weekend, Armoured Cockroach, but couldn't make it. So look forward to maybe doing another little threesome, gruesome threesome, twosome gruesome. <laughs> gruesome twosome <laughs> with me and Darren so he's just sort of like striking down now up, so you see some of his kit as well so we featured some of the stuff and just hope you enjoyed joining us get a few new ideas as I say sometimes wild camps will be the same but I always make sure I feature different aspects different versions of it and of course with the sleep mat which I'll incorporate at a future date a little bit more spec about it as I'm sure some people want to know uh, what they're like Okay, Daz, say your farewells, mate. Farewells, mate. Yeah, farewells, mate. <laughs> stay funky. Yeah. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> we can put that with the anecdotes of yummy. Stay funky. <laughs> All good, nothing bad. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> say it on Mike Roach's behalf. Yeah. As always, leave no trace, LNT, as best as possible. Obviously, got a bit of compressed earth where we were lying down, but. That will soon sort of get disturbed with a bit of breeze and more fallen leaves over the next few seasons. <laughs> like this bit. I wonder where that came from. <laughs> but there's our kit ready to go. So on that note, as always, thanks for watching. Really appreciate your interest and catch you in another video soon. Cheers. Take care.